It is still weird to think that we are wrestling fans now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just... Even I think it's weird sometimes. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll look up at my phone and go, Oh, wrestling's on. Oh, I'm watching wrestling. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, like, you know, I was into wrestling. I got out of wrestling. And then, I don't know, like, just, like, wrestling. Like, not even once, kids. Like, just... It is an on... It is a never-ending tournament arc. It's the best show ever. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, like for a while now, I've just been like, you know, this might be my favorite show in anime right now. Because <laughs> it's just... This ongoing narrative just never fucking ends. Like, some people would have been like, oh, wait, you're still watching wrestling? I'm surprised. Like, it's been kind of shit. It's like, yeah, but it's also been good sometimes. You know? And, like... like I mean, the, yeah, like, the, the ratio is better than some of the shit I watch seasonally. True facts. I mean, you watch a lot of garbage. I really do. It's a problem. And this is why I don't feel bad for being like, hey, Agro, let's watch all of Dragon Ball Super. Huh. What? You did it to yourself first. Oh, man. Let me just pile, pile some more shit on this you shit know, mountain. I, I was trying to come up with, with, with a poignant uh, explanation analogy, but really it was just going to be me calling you a Nazi. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, one could argue that, you know, forcing someone else to watch Dragon Ball Super is a hate crime, but still. Uh, so, Money in the Bank. Mm. Uh, they've been hyping this one for, like, God, it feels like forever now. Like, because like, yeah. we had, we had I mean, Backlash. It started right after Backlash. Yeah, and it's just, that was like a month and a half ago now. Um, so, apparently, I guess because, like, you know, we're, we're kind of fresh to the whole wrestling thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that, like, like, wrestling, like, like these pay-per-views have not been good. But we've still been enjoying them regardless. Hmm. Yeah, because like apparently a lot of people did not like Backlash, and you and I watched Backlash, and we're like, yeah, that was pretty good. And then I see like the the response to it, I'm like, oh, was I not supposed to like that one? Oh, uh, I, I like the matches. I mean, Backlash was the one with that really really boring Roman Reigns Samoa Joe fight, right? Yeah. Because yeah, like it seems to me like the big title matches have not been good. Yeah. Which is kind of nice that this time they just didn't even have the big title matches. Let Lesnar stay at home. Let's fuck him. Well, I mean, they have the other match. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the kickoff show actually had a title match, which surprised me. Yeah, the fucking uh, the Bludgeon, Gallows. Yeah, yeah. Gallows and Anderson and the Bludgeon Brothers. Which I, I always... Like, I only know their names because I wrote it down here because... I just always go, yeah, those guys from the Bullet Club. Yeah, like, I hear their name, and I'm like, yeah, those guys. Pretty much. Yeah, apparently they were on the main ticket, and then got kicked to the opening yeah. show. Yeah, and that, that's what I, because I never, like, yeah, they, they were, and then they were just like, it's on the, it's on the kickoff show now, and I'm like, Because right. we didn't watch the kickoff show. Huh? We didn't watch the kickoff show. Yeah, we did. Did we? Yeah. Like, like literally, like, we, we were just, we were, like, I don't sitting. remember seeing that match. The, it was... The, like, the bludgeon... Yeah, because you were just like, oh, man, uh, like, you know, are they going to give these guys a push? And then you're like, nope, I guess the bludgeon brothers are just going to raffle stomp through people continuously. Wow, that must have been unremarkable. Ah, uh, kind of. I mean, like, the Gallows and Anderson, I've... Like I said, I, I don't even care enough about them to remember their names. And the bludgeon brothers just kind of stomp people. Which is always kind of fun to see them stomp people. Uh... I really want to see, like, the Usos take another crack at it. Like, like, much like watching Finn Balor almost beat Braun Strowman, watching the Usos just try real fucking hard on the Bludgeon Brothers was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I can see why they just totally pushed this off to the kickoff show, because it's kind of a, a nothing match with two, like, you know, like, four guys with no heat, and it's just, eh. You know, plus, you know, tag them. But it's weird. Like... I was, for some reason, I, I guess, like, you and I got some things mixed up, because we were expecting, uh... Um, yeah, the leader of worlds. Yeah, the leader of worlds and the B team, and I guess maybe that's something that's going to be on Raw? So, I don't know. So, yeah, um... Yeah, like, I was really disappointed that we didn't get to see the leader of worlds do anything, because, you know, the, the one time I've gotten to see them wrestle, or the couple times I got to wrestle, it's like, they're a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So then the actual show starts, and they kick things off with Daniel Bryan and Big Cass. Which makes sense. Uh, you got, you know, Daniel Bryan, fan favorite, kicking off the show uh, against Big Cass, a guy who can't fucking wrestle. So, you know, but 
you know, Daniel Bryan is going to carry his seven foot ass over that finish line. And he does. And it's a pretty good match. Like, seeing just Daniel Bryan wreck his seven foot ass was amazing. It's just like, like, depending on who you put Daniel Bryan up against, it, it's always interesting. It's always different. I can just, you can see it when he's wrestling right. Cass. He was in a meeting, you're like, you're going to have this long ass story arc against Big Cass. You're just going to make me fight a tall guy. That's, that's what we're doing. Why don't you just bring the fucking, oh my god, this is, yeah, all right, no, I can yeah. do this. Yeah. I can do this. <laughs> yeah, no, like, it is, it has been the dumbest fucking feud. Actually, that's not true. Because the dumbest feud is later in the ticket. So, but it's been a really dumb feud. Because it's like, I'm a tall guy. I, I don't hate know. little like, guys. That's pretty dumb. It's pretty great. Because I mean, it's motherfucker, been... Cass can just walk out on stage and sell that idiocy so hard. Is he selling it or is he just an idiot? I don't know, man. Like, he says, it's, I it's, hate it's, short it's... people and that's my whole deal. And I believe it. So yeah, just we got a uh, we got that match, and like like I said, like the highlight of it is just Daniel Bryan wrecking that motherfucker's knee onto that post, and just putting him in that fucking just that lock. And uh, what the hell is that one called? Like like when when he grabs his fucking ankle? Like what is that one? When he grabs his ankle? Yeah, like where where he just like fucked up his knee? Like because because that's how he beat him. Uh, I yeah, but yeah, he does that, like, he does, like, the fucking dragon screw. Yeah, I was gonna say, dragon screw a couple times. Yeah, that was great. Like, it's just, God, like, that, that man just knows how to keep momentum up in a match. Like, he knows just how to keep a match inter interesting and fun and engaging. And man, I really hope now that this fucking feud is over, we can get him against someone else who's more interesting. Like, like, I want to see him against AJ Styles. I want to see him against Samoa Joe. I mean, we've already seen that, but I want to see, like, full-fledged fucking matches. I, I've been wanting to see him fight Shinsuke. I want to see him fight Shinsuke also. I'm hoping, you know, now that maybe that feud's over, maybe, <laughs> that uh, we'll get that also. Because there's so many great matches. I, I just want to see Daniel Bryan fight everybody. Like, just, I want Daniel Bryan versus the world. Because he can put on a great match against literally a fucking sack of potatoes. He is fucking amazing. Like, I could, I totally get now. Because, like, you know, being out of wrestling, I always kept hearing, like, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this guy? All right. I mean, you know, he doesn't seem like any Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock. But, all right. I guess this is what wrestling has to offer now. And then you see this motherfucker perform, and it's just like, damn. Damn. Like, seriously. Like, like, like that man, like, I will be just in my seat. Just, yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Wrap his knee around the pole again! Yes! <laughs> yes! Uh, but yeah, no, that was a, a really good match. Um, like, mo like I said, it's, it's all because of Dan O'Brien. Really nothing to do with Big Cass. Uh, Big Cass, you know, he, he, he sold his, his shit well, though. Like, like, you know, I felt like he was actually in pain when his knee was just getting fucked the hell and back. So he sold that really well. So then we get the actual... Dumbest feud in goddamn Money in the Bank. This whole fucking Bobby Lashley and fucking uh, Sami Zayn. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, no, you don't remember it. You don't remember it. I didn't even like, like of feuds. I'm like, I thought it, I classified it as a weird sideshow. Right? It takes up way too much time in the weekly episodes. Yeah. It's just been, it's been so bad and so weird. And, of course, it was just, it was a stomp. It was a stomp. Like, like, how do we make Bobby Lashley interesting? I don't know. Make Sami Zayn more of an asshole? Like, uh, the thing is, though, like, I like Sami Zayn because... Yeah, Sami Zayn's great. Yeah, like, 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 he's really entertaining. Like, you get him on that mic, he's a shit ton of fun. Bobby Lashley is a black hole of that charisma. Yeah. Bobby Lashley is creepy. His smile is really creepy. Like, like he has serial killer smile. It's just he's that guy who's like way, way too into the fact that he used to be in the army. Yeah, I don't know. I just like just thinking about Bobby Lashley makes me want to fucking yawn. He is just he is so uninteresting. He's not that particularly great in the ring. Like I, I haven't seen him do like a match that really. I mean, he does. He has like that one thing where he just huh, and, like holds a guy up there. For, oh like, yeah, the, the vertical suplex. Yeah, and then just slams him. And it's just like, that's... 
that, that's trying to watch Babulas hold a guy straight up and try not to cuff his balls. Right? <laughs> it's just... Yeah, I know. This, this match was just a fucking stomp, and it's just like, well, well what did that prove? Bobby Lashley could beat the shit out of this skinny guy. I mean, like, I always like having a guy like Bobby Lashley around in, in, in any kind of progressive tournament or, or group fighter thing. Just like, oh yeah, Bobby Lashley. Like, we need someone else to be scary. You don't have to have a personality. Just show up to impromptu tag team matches when we need you. Yeah, just like, like him. But thank fuck that whole thing is over. Yeah, no, that was like, I actually caught a little bit of Raw yesterday while I was at work. Because they were just watching it in the break room. It looks like we're going to get a Roman Reigns-Bobby Lashley feud, which I think might... I don't know if that's going to be better or worse. They might both be boring enough to just cross right over and somehow be interesting against each other. Like, like maybe their styles in the ring will match up. I don't know. But fuck, I, I man. couldn't even describe Bobby Lashley's style. I just... I, I just tune out of his matches so hard. I just because like I watch them, but I'm just it's just it's white noise. It's it's fucking TV static. It's just mm. like oh the match is over. Bobby Lashley won. Yeah, big surprise. Like I mean, Sami Zayn wasn't gonna go over in that match. Nobody expected that. Maybe that's why like all the matches I actually cared about had these swerve fucking outcomes because the ones were like. Like, 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 the, like the, the ones I didn't really care that much about, like this one, it's just like, yeah, no, that was obvious. Who gave a shit? Mm. Uh, and then we have like Seth Rollins and Elias, and I don't, I don't know how to feel about Elias. He's kind of annoying. I, I don't really like his gimmick. Uh, he's actually not bad in the ring. Mm -hmm. Like seeing him actually wrestle, he does, he does all right. Like <laughs> it, and, it took weeks and weeks to actually see him wrestle for the first right? time. Right? No, I know. Which I was saying when it happened, like. Holy shit, that guy actually... I was, I was saying, it's like uh, a fucking Saturday morning cartoon where the villain's some kind of like evil businessman or something, but he still has to be ripped and they fist fight him at the end because that's how you end an arc. Yeah. It's just weird. Like, it's... Like, like this match, I was surprised by. Like, it was alright. Like, it was... Like, Seth Rollins is just fucking awesome, and Elias is pretty solid from what I've seen. Um, it was really weird that this match kind of ended with Seth Rollins cheating because he grabbed, like, the fucking belt for leverage and, like, pulled his ass out and, like, used that as leverage to, for the pin. And that's a total fucking heel tactic that you're not supposed to do. And... I mean, if the motherfucker keeps wearing skinny jeans to wrestle, that's what happens. He doesn't wear skinny jeans. Well, you're talking about Elias? Mm-hmm. Well, no, no, like, 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 Elias did that, but then, like, like, uh, Seth, like, when he, when he went for that roll-up, he got the roll-up by pulling yeah. his belt. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, I'm just, like, so, like, Seth Rollins, like, you know, our baby face in this, totally pulled a heel move, and I'm like, are they gonna make him a heel now? Because, or was that just, like, a, some sort of weird one-off thing? Because, like, you know, usually, like, the, like, you know, because he's always been, like, the fighting champion, and, like, he, he Didn't plays that a much straight. significance in the move. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, that like you know that like yeah you know, he kind of smashed the fuck out of Elias's yeah, guitar. Th that, that was and then him just kind of like playing it like a, like you know like uh, in his interview and shit. So I'm just like maybe we're gonna see like a slow heel turn. I don't know, but like it was just kind of like a weird end. Like like Elias is is an annoying pretentious hipster. Let's bully him. Wait, that's a weird message to send to kids. Uh. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> Come on. Why is we just minding his own fucking business? Well, to be fair, I mean, like, what? No, no, he really wasn't, because, like, he fucking smashed a guitar over Seth Rollins. Oh, yeah, that was, uh-huh, yeah, that yeah. was that other thing. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, like, you know, Seth Rollins curves off against guitar, that's like, you, you had it coming, bitch. But, like, yeah, just, like, the fact that he kind of cheated the win, like, I wonder what they're gonna do, like, because, you know, it was one of those, like, oh, he grabbed, like, his belt, and, like, the ref didn't notice. So, like, I'm curious. Uh, then we got the uh, the women's Money in the Bank match, which I'm kind of surprised was so early in the card, but eh, whatever. Um, was I was pulling for either Ember Moon or Becky Lynch, man. Mm -hmm. Like those were because, like, like you look at that lineup, and it's like Charlotte just came off of a title victory, so I didn't see her winning. Uh, 
Like, like this, uh, Naomi, I didn't see winning it either. Like, you know, she, she's, you know, they're clearly, like, kind of pushing her, but I didn't see it happen. Lana was no way in no, hell. No, Yeah, Lana just wasn't going to happen. Um, like, like, the ones I really thought had a chance was either, uh, also, like, Alexa Bliss also just lost uh, her title as well, so I didn't see her winning. So, like, the ones I was really thinking, I'm like, okay, either it's going to be Natalie so they can do some fucking stupid Ronda Rousey storyline, mm-hmm. or it's going to be... Uh, Becky Lynch or Ember Moon, just because you know, like it seems like you know they're, they're super yeah. talented in the ring. It's, it's, like, it's time for Becky Lynch to do another tour, and Ember Moon's just fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you, know, you, you get the briefcases to one of them because it seems like you know, you know that they're, they're kind of mid card, like kind of upper mid carding it right now, and this this would be like that thing to like give them like a push. Mm-hmm. But then, like in that match, that that match was fucking dope. Like just. Like, great spot after great spot. Everyone was fucking great. Um, there was a bit of a rough patch where, like, Becky Lynch had to fuck with the ladder forever. Yeah. Waiting for Alexa Bliss to get back in the ring. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, get up here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was, like, the one awkward moment. Like, I think that was, it was really just more awkward when, like, she got to the top of the ladder and, and Alexa still wasn't back in the ring. Because... Like, you know, she, she's futzing with the ladder, and that made sense because, you know, like, even, like, the commentators, you know, like, they, they were just like, oh, like, you know, because the ladder was too far away, and that mm-hmm. was someone else's mistake, because right. whoever was on the ladder before her, like, just couldn't fucking reach it, they were just a little too far off, so, yeah, she's just like, let me futz around with the ladder to get it, actually get it in place, and then she starts climbing it, um, but, oh, man, just, I really like Becky Lynch, and I really want to see her, like, just win more, like, like also just when you had like like Becky and Charlotte both on the ladder, <laughs> that was great. Like there were just so many great fucking moments in this match. Mm-hmm. Like I can't even fucking recall them because it's just like um, fucking uh, Sasha Banks took that fucking nasty power bomb on the ladder. Mm-hmm. Like like I'm here. Like I was actually like watching a video of like some uh, like uh, like people's like thoughts on Money in the Bank, and people were just talking about how. This Natalie's like a really sloppy in ring performer, like you know, because apparently like 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 she like kicked Sasha in the head like like on SmackDown like really fucking hard, like like, like she's like so she's just kind of like fucking up moves and just kind of doing sloppy danger shit. But yeah, no, like I mean that power bomb looked great and you know Sasha still continued with the match, so I guess no harm no foul. Um, but yeah, no, like that was that was just a super fucking good women's match um and like because like all the women except for like natalia uh because honestly like I, i've never seen natalia do anything goddamn remotely impressive in the ring i i just see her kind of keep limping on her fucking knee because uh my knee mm-hmm. um but here like you know like, like everyone else though i'm just like yeah no like i like all of these people i think they're all fucking amazing in the ring <laughs> women's wrestling is great now <laughs> right i want to be real I like the women's division more than I like the men's division most of the time. Yeah, a because, lot of the time. <laughs> because the men's division feels like it's full of a lot of filler. Where like like the women's division feels like it's mostly like the cream of the crop. Like it's just it, it's just it's really just great right across the board. And, and it's like often like the men's division is broken up into this feud and this feud and this feud. So like duo, duo, duo. The women's division always seems like we're fucking we're all here in this league. Yeah. So yeah, uh, but yeah, fucking. Uh, Alexa Bliss won, and that shocked the shit out of me. That was wild. I just did not see that happening. And I was just like, because like, when I saw that, I was just like, I was kind of pissed. I was like, what the fuck? She just fucking, like, lost the title. Like, what are you even going to do with this? We found out what she was going to do with that. And honestly, now, like, seeing the outcome from that, I'm like, all right. Like, that was, that, uh-huh. that might have been the best thing story-wise. Because, like, I was legitimately fucking pissed, like, when she fucking won. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? A goddamn Alexa Bliss. Because, like, I haven't seen enough of Alexa Bliss to really gauge her in-ring skill. Like, like I did really like her match with Nia Jax because, like, she put up a hell of a fight. That was some fucking borderline Finn Balor versus uh, Braun Strowman shit. I don't know. Was it her or Sasha Banks that won that battle royale to qualify? Uh... I do not remember. Like, mm. I, I don't even remember how... I think because we watched the Hulu version that cuts a couple of matches, I think we may have actually missed 
both Alexa Bliss's and Ember Moon's qualifying matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck you, Hulu, for that, by the way. Like, I mean, like, I understand Raw's like a three-hour show, and there's a lot of, like, probably bullshit that's getting cut, but don't, don't cut, like, great women's fucking matches from it. And, like, don't cut Ember Moon matches. Don't cut fucking... Like, like, like Alexa Bliss, I want to see her wrestle so I can actually gauge her ability. Like, you know, SmackDown's like two hours long, so you, you cut the commercials, it comes out to about 90 minutes anyhow, so we're really not missing anything there. Uh, but, like, you know, like, like the Raw brand, it's just... You know, I feel like, like they, 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 they shove in too much storylines in, in the edit that we see, and then we get, like, dumb shit like, let's see the fucking Bobby Lashley Sami Zayn feud, because that's really what I fucking needed to see. Not like... An Ember Moon match. Mm -hmm. or, you know, like, I don't need that. No, I need to see fucking Bobby Lashley's sisters, which are a bunch of men dressed in drag because Sami Zayn's an asshole. <laughs> Somebody in the control booth. It's like 20 minutes in. Is this joke still funny? All right, yeah, let's keep rolling. But yeah. Then we get a match that I want to call the most boring match. Uh, but we had Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn, and I literally can't recall anything about that other than Bobby Lashley won that one, but uh, Jinder Mahal versus Roman Reigns. These are two guys who, I mean, I have really, really loved watching them fucking duke it out in back hallways. Right, but yeah. They're not super interesting physically, either of them, in no. the ring. They are, they are really, they're really boring. They but don't like, have, like, a good move set. Fucking... Jinder Mahal does great Temple of Doom face. Like, he's got that expression. Yeah, like, I feel like the only thing that carries Jinder is Sunil Singh because, like, like that man comes out there and when he's just like the modern day Maharaja, like I, I fuck you, like yeah, and I'm like, wait, shit, right? It's Jinder. He can't actually wrestle well. Fuck. And, <laughs> and then, goddamn like, Roman Reigns. Okay, is, I, I keep oh. fucking seeing Roman Reigns apologists who will be like, okay, guys, let's be real here. Yes, they're pushing Roman Reigns too hard, and he that that's fucking annoying. But he's not that bad in the ring. He actually is a good worker. And, I mean, he can sell moves. You know, he, he has, like, a few good spots here and there. Um, you know, like, I, I actually have been kind of enjoying his feud leading up to this point. But just, I just, I never see him do anything particularly interesting. Like, it's you the, know. Yeah, he's just boring. Yeah, like, his spear is fucking weak. Like, I mean, you know, you, like, I need to show you some Goldberg matches. And by oh matches, I need some squashes. Because that man fucking speared people. Like, when, when Goldberg speared a guy, you thought he snapped that motherfucker's spine in two. Robin Reigns, like, spears a guy. It looks like he just kind of, like, shoulder tackles him to the ground. It's just, it never feels like it has that impact. You know, the fucking Superman punches. It's just, it is the lamest limp dick fucking finisher it's just, oh my god, he kicked out of the Superman punch. Yeah, I could kick out of the Superman punch. He jumped right before he kicked him. Clearly this motherfucker doesn't know any goddamn thing about how punching works. Yeah. Ugh. So yeah, like, his fucking moveset's boring. I can't even think of Jinder's moveset at all. Like, just, <laughs> neither one of them... Throw Sunil Singh at him. <laughs> right? I did, I did really love... How, like, when Sunil Singh got up out of the fucking wheelchair to shove his ass into the pillar and got back in. Just, <laughs> fucking uh, uh, like, that was my highlight of that fucking match. That is what makes it better than the Bobby Lashley Sami Zayn match. Is fucking Sunil Singh getting out of the fucking wheelchair to shove Roman into the fucking post. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing was <laughs> vaguely adequate. Yeah. I remember in the middle of it, I'm like, do something cool or get to a ladder match. Yeah, no, like, that was. God, and that match went on really way too long. It really did. Because just once again, like, neither one of these guys can work well enough to just, like, <laughs> like you... People started chanting in the middle of it. <laughs> they were like, Rusev Day, or just whatever other random shit. Right. <laughs> like, we're bored. People started doing the fucking wave during that match. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Why are people doing the wave? I don't even know. Like, I actually saw a great fucking video on Twitter of someone who was, like, in the stands, like, in the way back, just following the wave as it was going. <laughs> I don't know why that was a thing. Like, Roman Reigns. Either put him in a toga and give him a different finisher, or just let it go, guys. It was... 
It was so bad. It was so, it was so limp. Uh, then we had Carmelo versus Asuka. Which, I had to rewatch that one. Really? Because it was so fucking bizarre, I didn't remember it happened. Wow. I sat around, I'm like, I know I saw that match. How did that match end? I couldn't fucking remember how that match ended. There was nothing in my brain for that shit to grab onto. Yeah, no, it was it was kind of a weird. Like, I mean, I mostly I never like, like it was a lot of Carmelo playing head games, mm -hmm. and like I like I want to say I genuinely like Carmelo. Uh, apparently, a lot of people hate her. I mean, you know, and like not in like like a heel way. Like like you know, you love to hate her, uh, but just like oh god, fucking Carmelo's terrible, and. Like, apparently people were super pissed when Carmella came, uh, went over um, Charlotte. Which is another reason why people didn't like Backlash. And I'm like, that Charlotte Flair uh, Carmella match was awesome. Mm -hmm. Because fucking just, like, like Carmella just technical wrestled, grappled her ass to the ground and submission the fuck out of her. Like, Carmella was great in that match. She made it, like, you watch that match and you go, yeah, no, she... She, she fucking, like, earned that victory. Like, like it wasn't like, oh, like, it was, like, well, she won because the script said she won. Like, like she put on a great fucking match, so when she came out on top, I wasn't angry. Yeah, same it thing was with, great. Fucking same, Charlotte walked in acting like she was going to walk all over her, yeah. and she'd fucking pay for it. Yeah, like, I mean, the same thing with the, uh, like, the Oscar, Charlotte, uh, Oscar and Charlotte Flair. Like, you know, I wanted Oscar to win. I was not upset when Charlotte won because Charlotte... Flair put on a fucking spectacular fucking match. So, like, when that happened, I was just like, yeah, no, that was a great match. I'm fine with the results. Here, like, 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 it just really felt like Asuka was dominating throughout most of it. And, like, like, Carmella gets in, like, a few good moments here and there. Like, like, you know, she, she, she does really, um, like, you know, sell Asuka really well. <laughs> But then just that weird fucking finish where that motherfucker comes out and like, like I only know that's because like, like I follow, like, oh, I guess follow is a strong word. I, I watch like a couple of YouTube fucking series where like they just talk about like shit that's happened in wrestling and shit and controversial shit in wrestling. So like I'll be like, oh, like I watch a what culture wrestling video. Sure. Yeah, I'll watch that. Um, so like I knew who the hell that guy was. I knew his place like, in the story. And... <laughs> I'm like, oh man, who's in there? Some ugly guy. Yeah. What? Oh, the announcers know who he is, okay. Yeah, no, like, it was so weird. Okay, like, the thing that, okay, like, like from a storytelling perspective, okay, I get it. This is the guy that, at last money in the bank, grabbed the briefcase for Carmella. So I get why he is there interfering in this match. But he doesn't actually interfere. He just walks up wearing, uh, like, fucking, like, Asuka's kimono mm -hmm. and mask and just kind of hanging by the ring. And it's just, and Asuka's, like, stunned, scared. And I'm like, what? Or maybe just bewildered and confused. <laughs> yeah, like, she's just... I mean, honestly, it, it's fucking weird. It like, is. like, not for the length of time and the effect it had, but, yeah, no, like... Uh... <laughs> it was just such a weird way to end that. And then, like, you know, she, she, you know, like, he pulls the fucking mask off to reveal himself, and then she's just, like, she looks like she's stunned. Like, it's just like, yeah, that, who that's cares a shit? The really you're, weird part. Like, you're goddamn Asuka. I believe in my heart of hearts you can whip his ass. Whip his goddamn ass! Who gives a shit? Mm -hmm. Like, so yeah, that that was dumb. And then fucking just uh, Carmelo with the roll up and the one, two, three. Yeah. And it's... Like, I immediately put that down and away and went like, oh god, I hope that pays off well because that was kind of dumb. Yeah, no, like, like they better be planning something with that because that was a really shitty way to end that match. Like, if, of all the matches, because I had, like, like five hopes. Like, I actually tweeted it out. Like, I had five things that I was like, this is what how I... These are the things that I hope will happen money in the bank. I expect to get maybe one of these. And it was, I wanted to see uh, uh, Becky Lynch win money in the bank. 
I wanted to see uh, Finn Balor win Money in the Bank. I wanted to see uh, Nakamura go over Sinsuke, and I wanted to see Asuka go over Carmella. Got none of those. God damn it. <laughs> none of those. And, like, Asuka versus Carmella felt like the obvious one. Like, there's no way in hell Asuka's going to lose this. And then she did. And she lost it in a really dumb way. Like, like they're just, they have just completely fucking killed her streak. and uh, mm -hmm. Which is really weird, because, like, they had her go in a fucking handicap match last SmackDown. And she just fucking dominated. It was a goddamn beast. She was motherfucking Asuka. Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh, just, god damn it. Ah. Uh, yeah, they really need to stop fucking her over. Yeah, just... Because it's like, like, like they, they put her over like mad crazy, like in like in the regular show, but just like when it comes to these fucking uh, big matches, it's just like every time, they, like every time it's a title shot, it's just like okay, she's now lost two title shots. What the fuck? Ugh. Speaking of Asians losing title shots, AJ versus Nakamura four. <sighs> Alright. Now, a lot of people have been, like, getting fed up and, like, like apparently people just have not been enjoying the Nakamura versus uh, AJ matches. But they're great matches. Well, because they're not as good as the Wrestle Kingdom match. And to be fair, we have, we have gone back and checked out Wrestle Kingdom 10 to see Nakamura versus Shinsuke, uh, the OG match. And yeah, that is a phenomenal match. And it is probably the best match I've seen those two have. But, I have been genuinely enjoying their matches that they've been having so far. Uh, I really liked uh, their, their match at WrestleMania. Uh, was it... Oh shit, was it... Um, was it the, the Greatest Royal Rumble where they had their rematch? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that was the one that ended in Count Out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was just one of those... Well, that was a nothing match. And... Then we had backlash where they was where the they the double, double kick the double yeah. kick to the dick and so I mean like I actually kind of liked that ending that was that almost felt poetic yeah like that match really was just like these motherfuckers have done nothing but fight each other for weeks yeah <laughs> they're just good at it yeah like I really enjoy their matches um, and then they had uh, that one qualifying match this is technically Shinsuke versus Nakamura. Yeah, this is yeah, this is actually be be five because they also had the match on SmackDown. Um because they had that match on SmackDown and uh to see like who's gonna pick the stipulation. And I love how that fucking match ended, where Sinsuke fakes getting kicked in the dick, and then like while the referee's just like, What the fuck, man? Did you kick him in the dick and he's just like, No, I didn't kick him in the and only for Sinsuke to fucking get him. That was great. I love that. That was some great fucking in ring storytelling, and then this match um, because of the nature of this match, because it is a last man standing match, you know, you don't get those intense, like, like, you know, pinfall scenarios. Because mm -hmm. it is a, you have to drop this motherfucker. So for like, so for like up to nine seconds, or like up to like the nine count, you have to just wait to see, like, you know, and it's like, oh, no, okay, well the match is going to continue. And then uh, like, so the other guy is kind of, is he going to get up? <laughs> All right, he got up. And then they have to continue. So, so you end up with like a lot of dead space in the match. That being said, even though Nakamura lost, I really liked that ending. Where, like, first off, like, like he goddamn like uh, uh, like like uh, Kinshasa's that motherfucker, and you think he's down. You think he's goddamn down. And just at the last second, he just kind of. Like, he's just staggering and just leaps onto the fucking announce table, which just counts as... Okay, that, that, that's upright enough! You know, and that was great. And then just it leading into Nakamura just fucking battered and beaten, getting up, leaning against the announce table. Come on! Only to just get fucking field goal punted right in the dick. So good. By the way, like, like I am surprised that at no point a cop has come into this goddamn storyline. Neither person has 
Are you allowed to wear a cup in the WWE? You are. Like, like it is a thing. Like, you can wear a cup. So I'm really surprised a cup is like a... Like, like, we've actually had this where, like... I remember forever ago, in the Attitude Era, China would, like, low-blow people during, like, uh, Triple H's matches and shit. And... Like, like, she actually, like, went for, like, a low blow on a dude, and, like, and then she's just, like, and then, like, the guy, like, reached into his, into his tights and pulled out a steel cup and then tossed it away. Uh, nah, bro, you need that. Leave that in there. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, well, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was obviously, like, a visual indicator. Yeah, it was for, great, it was great to get to Cali. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was <laughs> a great fucking moment to get to Cali. So, I have been expecting a moment like that where, like, Shinsuke goes He's for the He's got, dick. like, a fucking knife in there. <laughs> like, he just goes for, like, the dick punt and just, boom, fucks and just wrecks his shin on a fucking steel cup. Like, I have been waiting for that. And, like, this, it never happened. And it's been kind of weird that they haven't done that and implemented that into one of these matches. But, uh, that, uh, that all aside, though, just fucking, just, that, 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 that straight up fucking hardcore kick to the dick that fucking Shinsuke took at the end of that match was beautiful. That, like, I, I, I don't think I've ever, I don't think in my life I've ever considered, like, calling a kick to the dick beautiful, but just, that was, that was a beautiful kick to the dick. And then, uh, what did that lead into? Was that the... Oh, God, right, like, yeah, he fucking sets him up for, uh, for, um, what, what, did he get him with a phenomenal forearm? I think he got him with a phenomenal forearm. Yeah, yeah, because he got him with a phenomenal forearm. Because that was right after, yeah, because right before that, he fucking got him with the, uh, uh the Styles Clash off the fucking steps into the goddamn, into the goddamn, uh, matted floor. She's just, oh. Because we thought that was going to fucking take Shinsuke out. And then it's just like, oh crap, they both hit their finishers. It's anybody who's getting kicked to the dick. Oh, phenomenal forearm. <laughs> out. Because that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was the phenomenal forearm. Because he comes off and just, and they both go straight through the fucking announce table. Mm -hmm. And that was goddamn beautiful. So yeah, I really like how that match ended. Uh, there, like I said, there's a lot of slow, slow points in it because of the nature of the match, but... Like, no, I don't I don't know how people... Like, I, okay, I understand, like, you're getting kind of tired of seeing, like, the same two guys fucking wrestle each other. <laughs> but, like, I just... I can't not enjoy one of those... Ma like, one of their matches. Yeah, like, they're good. Like, they, they are just too fucking good of wrestlers for me to not like their matches. Like, like I, I, I have not seen a match with AJ Styles that I haven't fucking liked. I have never... I haven't seen a match... With Nakamura that I haven't liked, like I just, you know, it, like I, I hope this feud is over because I do want to see them wrestle other people. Mm -hmm. Like I said, like I want to see Daniel Bryan versus the world. I want to see Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm telling you, I want to see fucking Woken Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh man, we need to get his ass on Raw. Yeah, I, I want to see fucking him join that team and then fuck up the new day. Oh man, that is just. That just that just sounds like a fucking dream. But it really is interesting. Like like is 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 this it? Are they gonna move on? Is Shinsuke just gonna get really 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 twisted about this? Right? Yeah. I'm really curious where the hell you go from here. Like I mean, Shinsuke has now lost. Uh, like you know, like the the, the actual title matches. Like you know, he he has mm. not been able to capture the title now, and he has, you know, he he's lost by pinfall. He's, uh, he's lost from, you know, like, the 10 count now. Like, so he fucking go after Seth Rollins and then try again? I have no clue. I mean, maybe we can get, like, uh, like, Jeff versus Shinsuke. He just, like, takes a step down and goes for the U.S. title. Maybe. <clears throat> so then we got a match that I did not give a flying fuck about. Uh, Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax. I was interested to see how it would play out. I, I didn't care about this match because the, the, the heat between the feud was just, like, I challenge you to a match because I want to beat you. And, like, they, they could have done this match really well, but then it just it just came off as awkward and weird. You have, like, like Nia Jax just kind of being, like, this bully bitch 
pretty much exactly how like Alexa Bliss has been promoting her. Right? That is how she has been acting. It's like, wait, what? It's like I wasn't watching before this. Is she, is she supposed to be like this? Right, yeah. I thought she was supposed to be some sort of like weird like body positivity character and like, you know, she's and, and this whole thing of like them trying to just insert Ronda Rousey into the top of this card has been weird because like they don't want to do this and they don't want to do this and we got to make sure not to do this and just got to get it just and I really think this match went a long way into just slotting her into these storylines. Yeah and like I felt like no matter what was going to happen I was not going to be content with the outcome because you're either going to put the belt on Ronda and it's like well I guess Ronda's now the champion uh, after having one fucking match prior to this mm -hmm. or uh, Nia Jax is gonna fucking win, and you're just gonna fucking squash Ronda, like, before, you know, like, while you're trying to give her a push. So I felt like, no matter what happened, the outcome to this match was going to be bad. And then they fucking just pulled it off by having Alexa Bliss run up in this shit. Let me say, like, the actual match itself, I surprisingly like. Yeah, no, I don't like. I don't think Nia Jax is a very good wrestler. I think she's too slow. I think she doesn't have, like, a good move set. Um, you know, like, as far as, like, you know, like, it's, it's not even, like... I, I do love watching her pick up people who try to submission hold her. Yeah. Like, like that's that's always kind of fun. Uh, but, yeah, it's just... She is just not interesting yeah. in the ring. It was she just she the... reminds me of, like, the Big Show, like, whenever the Big Show was just kind of fat and lumbering and shit. Mm. It's just... Like, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a great match. I mean, like like all great fights in fiction, it, it, it told the story the whole way through. Fucking yeah. Ronda getting her ass handed to her until she finally figured out what the fuck she was doing. Yeah, like fucking Ronda getting up on the turnbuckle and then just... Yeah, they're like, what is she going to do? What is she going to do? It's just... Yeah, because I, I, I never even thought about the fact that it's like, oh, right, she's never been up on a turnbuckle. Like, and you can see her like kind of like, uh, uh, uh. And then, and I'm like... Awesome. Like, I mean, it wasn't even, like, that impressive a move. It was just, like, like a basic, just, you know, you know, jump. But it's still, like, the fact that she, like, she is willing to get up there. She isn't just going to be technical on the match shit. So, yeah, like, that was, that was cool. Um, she like, just fucking, she's standing there for, like, a solid 20 <laughs> seconds, about to roll the arm bar out. Like, I'm going to do it, bitch. I said I was going to do it. Yeah. It was it was a legit fucking uh, oh and then fucking Alexa goodness. Bliss yeah then Alexa Bliss just runs out there beating the shit out of him with the briefcase like I love how she like she beats fucking Ronda beats Nia Jax like beats Ronda throws her out of the ring beats Nia Jax gets out of the and then she's just like yeah no get yeah, out she's of looking around like I'm gonna cash it hang on a second bam bam yeah, <laughs> yeah. like that was amazing she just I could just Rex Ronda Rousey with that fucking briefcase. Then runs back, fucks up Nia Jax, goes to hand the briefcase over. No, wait. Whack, whack, whack. All right, now it is. Go and do it. Do the thing. Oh, uh. man. Um, during the uh, Rousey Jax match, mm -hmm. uh, Ronda Rousey's shoelace came untied. Yeah. And at that moment, I realized this is something I've never seen before. How are they going to deal with this? I was wondering about that too, if at any point she was actually going to lace up her boot again. Because I was really worried that she was going to trip, because she snags her lace at least once, I noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, like when she went to like walk towards, uh, like after doing something to Naya, like she like took a step and she like snagged her shoelace for a second. But yeah, like I was, I was kind of worried, wondering about that and I never really addressed it. Uh, but yeah, I know, like, like, like having Alexa Bliss win Money in the Bank so she could have this moment. Fucking 90 minutes later. <laughs> yeah, like that was... Like she got that briefcase, walked up the ramp, a little bit off screen, and stood there. And waited. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was shocked by like that outcome. And honestly, that is the best fucking outcome that match could have possibly fucking had. Because any, like I said, the, the outcomes that I was expecting was... Well, either it's going to be Nia or fucking uh, Ronda. I really thought I was... it might have ended in a weird disqualification thing. Yeah, or a weird, yeah, or a weird disqualification thing. Honestly, I think this might have been the best outcome. That would have yeah. been even better than a disqualification. It was pretty fucking wild. Because seeing her do that, that was entertaining as shit. Uh, uh, fucking Alexa Bliss, she's a good shit face heel. Like, you know, she's... Like, I, I don't like her anywhere near as, as much as Carmella. But, you know, she, 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 she's good at just being, like, this snobby princess archetype. And... Has anybody ever cashed in Money in the Bank, like, with, like, a week's notice? <laughs> just, like, I would like a title shot, please. Yeah, I don't... I don't 
think so. I think it's always just been, and then some guy like runs in and goes, "Yeah, I'm cashing this in," because like that's how like, it first happened with Edge. Like Edge, I think is how like the very first Money in the Bank went, and then like like he just cashed it in randomly, and people were like, "What the fuck? Is that how this works? Can he do that?" <laughs> it was the first Money in the Bank. I'm nobody Edge. Knew. I do what I want. <laughs> like you know, nobody fucking knew. Well, yeah. Shit, um, I, I think um, Paige had said during a scene with uh, Kurt Angle and the Constable. Yeah. That apparently that douchebag was one of like the three guys who fucked up his cash. In. Yeah. That was pretty great. That was pretty fucking great. Oh man, because like I, I don't know anything about Baron Corbin other than like he's balding and he shaved his head recently and he he kind of looks like that guy that like you know would try to sell you part out the pot outside of a trailer park, you know. Like, yeah, I don't know anything about Baron Corbin other than that. And, like, now that he's the constable. That is a thing. And then we get, finally, the main event, the, uh, the men's money in the bank. Hoo-wee! Hoo! Man. Just the... Quick, let's beat the shit out of Braun Strowman! <laughs> Me, although I will say, as soon as the dog pile starts, like, 15 seconds later, Miz has Finn Balor over in the corner... Because Miz knows the other guy he needs to look out for. So good. It was so fucking good. Oh, Rusev then, got to do so much in this match before not winning. I know. Oh my god. Like, I... Oh, man. Just fucking... Fucking just piling, like... like fucking burying him in ladders. Uh, it's just, oh my god, like, alright. Now let's go have the match. Yeah. And it just... I kind of forgot about him for a while. Right, and then you fucking... By the time see... Finn Balor comes back, I'll take this ladder and just... Uh-oh. Yeah, that was... <laughs> that was just great. Because, like, he fucking... He just, like... He fucking, like, raises his arm out of it like goddamn Super Shredder. It's, just, it's so cartoony, but it was so fucking good. Oh, my well, that, God. That is, that is Braun Strowman in a fucking... In a, in a nutshell. Like, it's just... That's so cartoony. <laughs> that's so good. Oh my Just, god. Ugh. Fucking Kevin Owens directing traffic. Like, no, no, I, I need fucking Rusev and Samoa Joe. You're the guys who can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Put them on the table, Samoa Joe's like, get your ass off. You're like, oh yeah, even bigger frog splash. I love. I really thought he was just going to throw the fucking ladder over. I was worried that was going to happen too, because that probably would have killed Kevin Owens. <laughs> But yeah, I love how just, yeah, like, like it's just like, okay, you do this, the fuck him up, now you do this, I'm gonna do this, you get your ass on that fucking ladder! <laughs> it's just coming up, just up there, and he's, he knows he's dead. He's gonna die tonight. Because he's looking down that ladder, and Braun Strowman's like, I fucking, I fucking told you! <laughs> just... And there's, there's a lot of ways you can describe the things that happen in wrestling. There's a lot of move names in wrestling, but, but, but what I'm here to tell you is that Kevin Owens... Got his ass thrown off that ladder. <laughs> Just what? <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> oh my god, that was such a good spot. I love it. <sighs> and then Kevin Owens forever. Oh my god, like, like they they keep doing these fucking fake outs with Finn Balor where you think he's gonna pull through. Like, like I I really kind of love his underdog narrative that they've been doing, where it's just. Like, he's a small guy, but he's fucking athletic as shit. He's so fucking super talented. One of the best and, aerial and just, dudes. He'll sling blade all fucking week. Right, and he is just, he is just within inches of victory every time before they just kind of pull that carpet out from under him. And it's just... And the flip side of that is the much less uh, friendly version of that they're doing to Rusev. Yeah. Man, because I was like, I was like, Balor or Rusev, I don't care which. Just... I really, I really thought for a minute there it was gonna be Rusev. Yeah, like, he was great. I mean, like, Rusev's always great, though. Like, I mean, he's just so much fun in the ring. Like, he's just, he's got so much personality. Um, just, this match was full of great goddamn people. Even fucking Kofi, who, like I said, I don't really Oh, care. God, yeah, fucking Kofi. Like, the moment they announced it was Kofi, I thought it might have been him. Like, oh, fuck, that's a smart pick. Yeah, that would have been a random one. Um, and it's not, well, everybody, because you've got fucking heavy, 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 heavy Finn Balor and Kofi Kingston. Yeah. Nobody thinks The Miz is going to win anymore. Yeah. Like, I, I was really pulling for The Miz. Oh, my God. Where fucking 
Braun Strowman like is walking back to the ring and it's just the Miz in there. It's like, oh god, yeah, because what was it like Finn and Rude like try to clothesline it with the ladder and he just shoulders <laughs> through and breaks it. <laughs> the Miz is in there shitting his pants. And he's just like trying to get up the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> It was so good. Oh my god! Like, like everybody was great in this. Like, the Miz was great. The, like, fucking Kofi was yeah, great. fucking Air like, Kofi, man. It was it was a great damn match. Like, fucking like Finn Balor also, of course, fucking amazing. Fucking Samoa Joe just being one mean motherfucker this entire goddamn match. Which is just that's just Samoa Joe's character, one mean motherfucker. Ah. Oh. But then just fucking in the end. Braun, Braun Strowman comes in. Can't fight fate. Like, I'm not happy with that outcome because, like, like the two people who I thought just were not going to win this at all, Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman, because mm. they don't need a briefcase to get a title shot. Yeah, I just... They are just... Weird. They, they're, they're too dominating. They're too fucking good. Like, they, like you know... They just did not need that push. Neither one of them. So, when it ended up being Braun Strowman, I'm like, what is he going to do with this? Like, it, like maybe he's going to be that guy that, like, that, that does that thing you're talking about, where he just, like, slams the briefcase out, bring me Brock Lesnar! Because <laughs> you need at least two months of lead time to get Brock Lesnar on the fucking show. Right? It's just like, yeah, you can't randomly challenge a fucking champion who never actually shows up to goddamn events. But yeah, it's just like, like I, I want to see him. Like I, I want to see anybody else because, like, fucking Finn Balor, man, that would have been great. Yeah. Fucking, um, uh, like the Miz would have been great. Uh, Rusev would have been great. Rusev those three, would have been fucking amazing. Those three, if either one of those three had won, I would have been totally fine with. God, oh, keep sitting here patiently waiting for the era of we let Rusev win to start. Yeah, I, I think the WWE fandom has been waiting for that now for years. Because um, cause every time I ask someone, it's like, so, are they ever going to, like, give Rusev a push? So, yeah. I totally understand why everybody fucking loves Rusev, though. He's great. Yeah. He's just, he's awesome. But yeah. Money in the Bank. I kind of think this was my least favorite pay-per-view I've watched so far. I mean, unless we count the Greatest Royal Rumble, but the Greatest Royal Rumble had the Greatest Royal Rumble, where Daniel Bryan was just the most amazing guy ever. Hell yeah. So, I don't know. I think, you know, for pure entertainment value, because, okay. I mean, all these pay-per-views have had at least one really great match. Yeah, no, like I said, like the Daniel Bryan match, great. Bobby Lashley, fucking Sami Zayn, completely forgettable. All right. Uh, Seth Rollins and Elias. That was a surprisingly good match. The Women's Money in the Bank match. Um, really goddamn good. Had an outcome that I didn't think I was going to like. But then ended up going, holy shit, that was brilliant. Uh, Jinder versus Roman Reigns. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put Carmella and Asuka on the fucking shitty side of that. Yeah. Because that was, that, was an, that was kind of like an odd match. Because I really, I really think that dumb ending also robbed us of like a sweet last 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, you know what? People don't like it. I like Nakamura versus AJ. Mm. You know, I wanted Nakamura to go over, but the ending to that was so fucking good and so fucking poetic with just that fucking field goal kick to the dick. I can't be angry about it. Uh, yeah, Ronda versus Nia. Like, that was a legitimately good match. And having a less, a less of Alexa Bliss just come in and just interrupt it and just fucking steal the title was some great shit. And... As much as I don't like the outcome of Money in the Bank, the men's Money in the Bank. It was still a kick-ass match. Yeah, yeah, no, fuck it. I like this pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Like, in retrospect, when I think about it as a whole. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, the fucking, like, the mere fact that I am disappointed by an Asuka match really should say a lot. Like, I'm just like, man, how do you fuck up an Asuka match? Asuka and Carmella, you took two fucking female wrestlers who I genuinely really like, and you... You, you kind of turned in an okay match with just a really disappointing ending. Mm -hmm. But then you took Ronda and Nia Jax, a match that I didn't give a flying fuck about, and made that fucking, like, really good with a great fucking ending. So, yeah. 
Money in the Bank. It was, I actually liked it. Like, now that I've compartmentalized all of my thoughts and just kind of looked at the whole thing and... Yeah, no, I liked Money in the Bank. It was, it was genuinely enjoyable. Like, I was really disappointed at first, but the more I kind of reflect back on it, I go, yeah, no, that was good, that was good, that was good. Uh, Big Cass is fired, so we'll never have to see him again. So, you know, he went out on a great match, you know, that Dana Bryan carried him over. So, you know, they're just, like, the, the future just feels open now. Right. I mean, I guess now all we have to do is figure out what Extreme Rules are and whether or not it's a style of schoolyard Beyblade. 